Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this lesson, we'll learn about creating an assembly in Civil 3D. So let's get started. In this exercise, you'll use some of the subassemblies that are shipped with Autodesk Civil 3D to create an assembly for a basic crown roadway with travel lanes, curbs, gutters, sidewalks, and slopes to an existing surface. Now note that the corridor assembly you build will be used to create a corridor model in the Creating a Basic Corridor tutorial. Let's begin by going to our Assembly-1A drawing in our Tutorials folder. Now next, go to your Home tab and then to your Create Design panel. Next, click on the Assembly drop-down and select Create Assembly. Now we get our Create Assembly dialog box. Let's go ahead and give it a name. We're going to call it Primary Road Full Section. We're going to go ahead and leave our defaults and then click OK. Now you'll see in our command line it's asking us to specify assembly baseline location. I'm just going to go ahead and click off into space right over here. The viewport zooms to the assembly baseline which looks like this. So let's go about adding a lane subassembly. If the tool palette containing the subassemblies is not visible, go ahead and go into your home tab and then look under your palettes panel and then click on the tool palettes. In the tool palette Go ahead and right click on the tool palette's control bar. Then select Civil Metric Subassemblies. Next, click the Lanes tab. Now, select this lane option Lane Super Elevation. Next, focus in on the advanced area within your properties and specify the following parameters. For side, we're going to leave it at right. For width, we're going to change it to 3.5. And potential pivot, we're going to change that to no. Next, in the drawing, click on the marker point on the subassembly baseline. Now we're going to add a curb subassembly. In the tool palettes panel, Go ahead and click your Curbs tab. And we're going to start by adding just a general curb. Then in the drawing, we're going to pan over and select the marker point at the top right edge of our travel lane. Note that if you attach the subassembly to the wrong marker, you can move it to the correct location. Press Escape to exit the subassembly placement mode, and then go ahead and select your curb assembly, and you'll notice that we have a blue grip that appears at the corner. Go ahead and select that grip, and let's move it off to the side. Now select that grip again, and we're going to move it to this location right here by selecting the endpoint of this line. And then press escape. And that's how you go about moving your subassembly. So let's go ahead and move it back. We'll select it again, select our grip, and then select the endpoint of this line. Now let's go about adding a sidewalk subassembly. In our tool palette, go ahead and select the Basic tab and select Basic Sidewalk. In the Properties under Advanced, go ahead and input the following parameters. We're going to leave the side at right, but the width, we're going to change that to 1.5. The buffer width, we're going to change that to 0.5. And buffer width 2, 
we're going to change that to 0.5 as well. In the drawing, select this marker at the top point of the back of curb. After that, we want to create a daylight. So escape out of the subassembly tool, and under our basic tab, we have this subassembly option, basic side slope cut ditch. Select that subassembly, and again, under advanced, we want to keep the side at right. For a cut slope, we want to keep it at 2 on 1. And for a fill slope, we're going to leave it at 4 on 1. In the drawing, select this outside edge. Go ahead and press Escape. And this action ends the subassembly placement command. Now we're going to mirror the subassemblies to the left side of our baseline. In the drawing, select the four subassemblies you just added, and then right click and select mirror. And then zoom in to our marker point and click the marker point on the subassembly baseline. The subassemblies are now displayed on the left side of our assembly marker. The mirror command creates a mirror image of the selected assemblies. All the subassembly parameters except for the side parameter are retained. Note the parameters of the mirrored subassemblies are not dynamically linked. If you change a parameter value for a subassembly on one side of the subassembly baseline, the change will not be applied to the opposite side. So that's how you go about creating an assembly in Civil 3D. If you'd like to learn more about Civil 3D workflow tips and tricks, visit AutoCADCivil3DTraining.com and be sure to sign up for future video notifications or click subscribe on our YouTube channel. Again, my name is Charles Ellison. Take care.